Good morning um, and welcome everyone to the uh, Columbia Law School ERA Project and Columbia Journal of Gender and Law Symposium on the Equal Rights Amendment, the new guarantee of sex equality in the US Constitution. I'm Catherine Frankie. I'm a professor of law here at Columbia Law School. I direct our Center for Gender and Sexuality Law. And I'm the faculty director and founder of our ERA project, something about which we're enormously proud. We've been, we just celebrated our one year anniversary. And um, in that one year, we've made an enormous impact in the thinking about how to get the ERA finally ratified and what it will mean. And what today's project will be and tomorrow's as well is to think through those hard questions in a rigorous and principled way of really what would a constitutional explicit promise of sex equality mean. Um, to begin our day uh, and to begin the symposium, I wanna welcome our Dean, Dean Jillian Lester, who is the Lucy G. Moses Professor of Law and our 15th Dean at Columbia Law School, the second female Dean. Um, she assumed the deanship in 2015 and before becoming Columbia Law School's Dean um, uh, and even still, she is a distinguished scholar of workplace equality. And I am proud to say that she has implemented that scholarship at Columbia Law School as Dean in addressing issues of pay and equity, diversity in our faculty, supporting our students, um, uh, uh, creating new courses at Columbia that deal with a wide range of sex equality and other forms of, of equality issues. So I am proud to have Jillian Lester as our Dean and I welcome her to welcome you to the symposium. I'm Jillian Lester and I'm grateful for the opportunity to welcome you to this important symposium on the Equal Rights Amendment. My thanks to Professor Frankie, the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law, the Law School's ERA project, the Columbia Journal of Gender and Law, and those who will serve as speakers and moderators over the next two days. In January, we, we marked the date upon which two years had passed since the 38th state ratified the Equal Rights Amendment. For some advocates and scholars, this means that the ERA has become the 28th Amendment to the US Constitution. For others, Additional complex legal questions must be resolved before it's safe to declare the ERA over the finish line. Over the course of today and tomorrow, leading constitutional scholars, advocates, and elected officials will convene to rigorously examine the history of the ERA, the struggle to ratify it, the continuing need to add sex equality protections to the Constitution, the impact the ERA could have on reproductive justice, and the potential the ERA holds for modernizing and transforming the very notion of constitutional equality, not just sex-based equality, but the right to equality for everyone. I can't think of a better place than Columbia Law School to host this symposium. Our Center for Gender and Sexuality Law has established Columbia as the most distinguished law school in the country for training the next generation of advocates working to expand gender-based justice. Our students have worked closely with the center's faculty and staff of the ERA project to write amicus briefs in abortion cases, brief Congress, the White House, and the media on the complex legal issues surrounding the ERA's final ratification, and to make the case that stubborn forms of sex-based inequality justify the effort to amend the Constitution to explicitly bar sex discrimination. I'm honored to be a part of hosting such a distinguished lineup of speakers who will engage deeply over the next two days into the hardest questions surrounding the ERA, and we're delighted that New York State Attorney General Tish James will be providing the keynote address as a capstone to the symposium. Welcome to you all. Thank you, Dean Lester. Good morning and welcome everyone. My name is Ting Ting Chang and I'm the director of the Equal Rights Amendment Project. We're a law and policy think tank that develops rigorous research, policy papers, expert guidance and strategic leadership in the ERA to the US Constitution and on the role of the ERA in advancing the larger cause of gender-based justice. In the past year, we've become the experts that our allies want in the room with the most challenging gender justice strategies are being discussed. We're thrilled to host, host the symposium to bring together this esteemed group of speakers and to go in depth into the ERA. Please note that we are recording the symposium and we'll be making each session and special remarks publicly available afterwards. Now, I'd like to introduce Nina Jaffe Geffner, third year law student and editor in chief of the Columbia Journal of Gender and Law. 
our dedicated and tireless collaborators for her remarks on behalf of the student editors. Thank you, Ting Ting. Hello, everyone. My name is Nina Jaffe Geffner, and I'm the editor in chief of the Columbia Journal of Gender and Law. We are so thrilled to be co sponsoring this event, which highlights both the significance of and potential for an equal rights amendment in the 21st century. I would first like to extend my deepest gratitude <clears throat> to our co sponsor in this event, the Columbia Law School ERA project and specifically to the ERA project's directors, Ting Ting Cheng and Professor Catherine Frankie. I know that I speak on behalf of everyone at the journal when I say how deeply we've appreciated the opportunity to collaborate throughout this process. And it is a partnership that we at the journal look forward to continuing. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Lilia Hajivanova, the Associate Director for the Center for Gender and Sexuality Law, for assisting in the coordination of this event and facilitating its smooth operation over the next two days. Thank you as well to the Journal of Gender and Law Symposium editors, Tamu Zavivi and Diana Costin, for dedicating their time to organizing this event over the past eight months. And finally, a huge thank you to our incredible panelists. As a student journal, the goal of the Columbia Journal of Gender and Law is to engage with gender related legal issues in a nuanced way that promotes both discussion and debate. Today's symposium directly furthers that mission. And we welcome all of our speakers who are the preeminent experts on the Equal Rights Amendment and whose discussion I know will spark thoughtful commentary and debate both within our law school community and among the many additional academics, practitioners and activists leading the continued charge for gender equality. I'm looking forward to learning from all of them, and I hope that you are too. Thank you so much for joining us and please enjoy our symposium event. And now I will pass it back to Ting Ting Cheng to begin our first panel. Thank you, Nina. Uh, our first panel will start probably at 11 a.m. So see you all in a couple of minutes. 